I've been a councillor for over 10 years uh, in a ward which I, I suppose I'm biased, I think it's the best in the, in the city. It is very beautiful. We're stood in a very interesting place here. Uh, the whole ward follows the river all the way down to Chesil Bay. So it is a very interesting part and it has a diverse population from social housing uh, on the edges of uh, Townhill Park into general housing through the rest of Bittern and Bitter Manor. So why did you invite me here this morning? Well because we've had issues with the mill or the, the traffic through the mill for many years. In fact, ever since I became a councillor, which I think is over 10 years ago, there was a survey done where the majority of people on this side of the mill uh, wanted traffic lights. Uh, and I, with residents, have tried to get the council to look at putting traffic lights here. Me personally, I would have liked to trial, but at the moment, they do appear to be moving forward with traffic lights on a temporary basis, which I think will help the traffic in the city, not only here, it will help the traffic in um, across Cobden Bridge and down Bidden Road. Do you, do you know how much it would cost to put the traffic lights in? The, the final, we've had sort of tentative prices around about 160 to 200,000. That's capital money, so it's not revenue, and people do struggle with capital and revenue. The capital money is borrowed, primarily from the government, at a very low interest interest rate. So effectively to borrow the money over a period of time, say 10 years, is a fairly small amount of money. But revenue comes in and gets spent. So effectively, as I said, it's, it's like if you look at it on your household prop, um, issues, you pay your mortgage and what's left you spend to live. And that's roughly the way the council works. Very crudely, but that's the way it works. But the council, it's not the top of the list, but I'm a local councillor, so it is. It's been an issue for many, many years. Um, and, I, and I think the council is now looking at it because as I said earlier, it's a way of moving traffic from Cobden Bridge, uh, which is, uh, has traffic congestion, and also Bidden Road. So if you can get a few more cars through here, uh, 10% of the traffic that goes from one side of the city goes through here. So if you increase that slightly, you can reduce um, the traffic congestion, which causes pollution. So it's important that if we can do it, then we do, we will do it. Okay, given that you brought... I am asked many times, stood here at Wood Mill, why don't we put a sign up for the three car, three car rule? To understand the three car rule, local people understand three cars go through, three cars come the other way. Works very well and if anybody goes against that, sometimes it causes a traffic jam. People have asked for that sign. It does not conform to the department. So it's not allowed. It can't be in the highway code. It's not enforceable and the council can't put a sign up that doesn't comply with regulations. Now, um, I know that recently the council allocated uh, £30,000 for every council ward. Am I right? No. Ten th uh, the council have allocated £10,000 for small capital projects. That isn't to say there is actually £10,000, but councillors in each ward can bid for up to £10,000 to be spent on small capital projects in the, the ward. Um, I'm not sure of this, but I think we in Bidden Park have probably be, have always tried to use it as best we can. As I said easily, the mugger, we contributed to that and we're having a sign painted and we're just about to um, make some proposals now in conjunction with uh, SO18, the big local. So I've talked to them. It's trying to find out what people want. Um, it's only a small amount of money, but sometimes it's park benches and, and, and simple things. And that's what we try and look for and ask people what they, what they want. And we, we do, it's my job to represent the people, not to tell the people what they want. I know that you're very interested in air pollution in the city. Yes. And also that some people say that basically traffic lights bring, uh, cause more pollution. Well, what did you say to that? Well, there is no doubt that stopping traffic causes pollution. It, it's quite a simple uh, analogy. Um, we, we love to control traffic in the city with traffic lights and, and it stops traffic flow and if you stop at a set of traffic lights and your engine runs, you will cause pollution. Could you tell us a little bit about the issues in Beaton Park Ward? Well, as I said, we've got the traffic light here 
We've also got the airport consultation which is coming up and that's an interesting position because some people are for it, some people are against it, um, but the airport is looking to extend the runway, uh, take a few trees out which enable the, the planes to fly out more fully loaded and increase the passenger numbers. People can engage with me by many different ways. We try and publicise as best we can our phone numbers, our email numbers. The majority of people uh, correspond with me via email, which I like pretty well because it keeps the record and it's easy to pass on. So that most things. Um, but we have an open surgery at the uh, Cobbett Road Library on the third Saturday of every month. But people, you know, I will visit people in the homes, contact them by phone. It's very easy, and if people, and they, if what happens if they contact the council, then the officers will refer them back to me. You are talking about about accountable democracy. A, accountable democracy. Most people think that a lot of the council uh, decisions are made in private. They're not. I would say uh, 95 to 98 percent of all decisions are made in the public forum. A few that are made. Uh, in private session because there, there are some commercial sensitive information. Most cancers will avoid speaking about that so they can stay in the public domain. So everything is out in the open, people can see it, you can see our papers online, you can see what we talk. We are completely open and I would encourage anybody to come along and um, see the democracy in action. People can make deputations and petitions at full council um, where they get seven minutes to come along and we will help them get through that because not many people are keen on public speaking but we all started councillors had to make their first speech we know what it's like and certainly we don't want to mock anybody who comes along and speaks at full council the deputations petitions can cover anything uh, we've had deputations, reference to traffic lights here. Uh, we've had all sorts of deputations. Uh, people against our, the budget proposals. People can come along and make any deputation or petition they like. And councillors will help them make those, those presentations in council. It's a bit daunting to stand up in front of 48 people plus officers, but we all had to make our first speech some way, and we all know it, and so we're all very, very careful to help people uh, to make those presentations in full council. Everything that we do is online, it's in reports, people can see. So we try and be as open uh, as we can and that's always been the case and always will be the case. The reports are written in the start which I think is difficult, it takes a little time to get used to it and I don't know what you do about that and I think that's uh, the yes minister part of the local democracy. Uh, I think perhaps that's where a local councillor comes in. If people see the report and they want to ask questions and understand some of it, come and discuss it with us. We'll help them understand bits and pieces and you know, we as councillors might learn something as much as they might learn something from us. What are for you the top couple of issues in the city? For me, uh, I I was the cabinet member many years ago for adult social care and social care is still very much uh, something that I'm very interested in. It's looking after people in old age but strangely although that's my speciality I often think the most important thing is the first thousand days of a person's life that is from conception up to two years and if you can influence a child's life I don't mean by physical but but sorry boy getting directly involved but if you can short ensure the mother's health during pregnancy is good and the child is fed and nurtured within the two years that's a very positive sign for a good uh, and healthy life for, for many many years and that has the big, biggest influence on our lives so although I'm not directly involved if people ask me I often say the first thousand days of a person's life is the most most important